Intervals are how we measure musical distance between notes. Being able to identify and label them helps us think concretely about music. By making distinct categories in our brain for all the different sounds, we improve our perception and understanding of music. We can measure out melodies precisely, improving intonation. And intervals are the building blocks of how we create chords, harmonize, compose and counterpoint, and a host of other crucial musical skills. The first step in mastering intervals is being able to label them. And that's what I'm gonna teach you now. In Western music, the smallest division of musical distance is the semitone, or the half step, which is the distance between any two adjacent notes on a piano. We call this interval the minor second. And in a sense, you can think of all other interval distances as some number of semitones added together. The next widest musical distance is two semitones. And we call it the major second. Three semitones is the minor third. And so on. Now, you can memorize something like this chart, which would give you a pretty good jump on interval naming. But to be really precise, we need a more systematic approach. Because among other reasons, there's more than one name for each musical distance. And only context will tell you which label is correct. And the interval naming system breaks down into two steps. The first is identifying the number of the interval. This is pure alphabetical distance. If you're trying to figure out the interval between C and F, you count from C to F inclusively. C, D, E, F. This interval is a fourth. How about from G sharp to E? Again, pure alphabet, so ignore the accidental. G, A, B, C, D, E. That's a sixth. Note that you always count the interval number from the lower to the upper note. You wouldn't count from E to G, nor from G down to E, because in both of those cases, you'd call this distance a third, which is incorrect. So you try it. What's the interval number from F up to C sharp? All right. F, G, A, B, C. A fifth. It's important to know that we have a special name for two interval numbers. An interval number of one, the same note, C and C, or C to C sharp, we say is a unison. And for an interval number of eight, which again would be like from C to C, or C and C sharp, but now with all the intervening notes between, we call it an octave. Now at this point, it should be troubling you that the same interval number can apply to two obviously different musical distances. C to C, C to C sharp, they're both octaves. They're not the same distance, and they couldn't sound more different. So we need the next step to determine interval quality to disambiguate them. For interval quality, we handle seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths one way, and unisons, fourths, fifths, and octaves another. There are two different classes of interval. They sound different, behave different, so we have a different naming scheme for each to account for that. The unisons, fourths, fifths, and octaves are pure, extremely consonant sounding intervals. And so their default quality, if you will, is called perfect. That's to say, if you're trying to identify an interval and the interval number happens to be a unison, fourth, fifth, or an octave, we use the test of whether the upper note of the interval is in the key of the lower note. If it is, we say the interval is perfect. So let's try one. How about C to G? It's a fifth. Now we test whether G is in the key of C. Well, the key of C has these notes, which contains G. The upper note is in the key of the lower note, so we say this is a perfect interval, a perfect fifth. And notice how pure and open this interval sounds. Perfect, indeed. Now what if the upper note wasn't in the key of the lower note? What if we were trying to identify the interval of C to G flat? Well, the key of C doesn't contain G flats. And G flat is a semitone lower than what the key of C does contain for that note letter, G natural. In such a case, 
we would call this a diminished interval, a diminished fifth. If we were looking at C to G sharp, G sharp is a semitone higher than what the key contains. So we'd say it's augmented. And that's the rule set for this class of intervals. If the upper note's in the key of the lower, we call it perfect. Flat by a semitone, we say it's diminished. Sharp by a semitone, we say it's augmented. All right, you practice one. How about B flat to E natural? First, we confirm the number, B, C, D, E. It's a fourth, so we know it belongs to this class of interval. Now we need to know the key of the lower note. B flat major contains these notes. Is the upper note in the key of the lower note? It isn't. B flat major contains E flats. E is a semitone higher than that. So we'd say this is an augmented fourth. Okay, for more practice on this class of interval, I've given you three more to try and identify. I've put the answers in the description so you can check if you've done them correctly. Now let's move on to the other class of interval. Seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths. If the upper note of the interval is in the key of the lower note, for these intervals, we say is major. Let's try C to A, a sixth. Again, the key of C has these notes, so A is in the key. So we say this is a major sixth. Now what about C to A flat, where the A flat is a semitone lower than what we find in the key of C? Well, we'd say that's a minor sixth. C to A sharp, a semitone higher than what we find in the key is an augmented sixth. Similar procedure to the other class of intervals, but notice the default quality for these is major, whereas it's perfect for the other. We have the same name for a semitone higher than what's in the key of the lower, say it's augmented, and different names for a semitone lower. Major goes to minor, perfect goes to diminished. Let's try one together. How about D? To F. It's a third, so belongs to this class of interval. And the key of D has these notes, meaning it contains F sharps. So F natural doesn't belong. It's a semitone lower than what's in the key. So we say D to F is a minor third. Now here are three more intervals belonging to this class. Try your hand at identifying them. Answers in the description. Now let's identify an interval without knowing in advance which class it belongs to. And as we go, we'll solidify the procedure for interval naming. Let's do F to B. First thing, we figure out the interval number. That's simply counting letters from the lower to the upper inclusively. So F, G, A, B. This is a fourth. And knowing the interval number, we know which class of interval this belongs to. Unisons, fourths, fifths, and octaves have this naming scheme. And to apply this, we need to know the key of the lower note of the interval, which in this case would be the key of F. F, G, A, B flat, C, D, and E. We ask ourselves, is the upper note of the interval in this key? And it isn't. The key of F has B flats, B natural is a semitone higher than that, making this an augmented interval, an augmented fourth. Let's do one more, G to F sharp. First, figure out the number, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. It's a seventh, meaning it belongs to the class of intervals of the seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths using this naming scheme. Get the key of the lower note, G major, and we find that F-sharp, the top note of the interval, is in the key of the lower note. So this interval gets its default quality of major. G to F-sharp is a major seventh. And that's your procedure. First, you count alphabetically from the lower to the upper note of the interval, inclusively. And this gives us the interval number. Then we use the interval number to decide which of the two naming rules we apply. 
If the interval number is a unison fourth, fifth, or octave, and the upper note of the interval is in the key of the lower note, we say the interval is perfect. A semitone higher, it's augmented. A semitone lower, it's diminished. If the interval number is a second, third, sixth, or seventh, and the upper note of the interval is in the key of the lower note, we say the interval is major. If it's a semitone higher than what's in the key, it's augmented. Semitone lower, it's minor. And that's it. That's how you label intervals. Now here are three more to try. Answers in the description. Any questions, ask in the comments. That's all for now. I'm Sahara Galt. I'll see you next time.